Is it water with the sheep in the in the box? There's been a lot of talk recently around June, otherwise known as Sean Head, or depending on if you believe the rumours, Boxy, and her apparent place on the left as a movement. She does, after all, claim to be a sock dem, though she has in the past described herself as a liberal, a centrist, and various other things besides. But that's fine, people's ideologies can change, and it seems like in recent months, June has slowly been drifting leftwards and openly claiming leftism, and as a result, more and more people on the left are starting to stand up for her, inviting her into leftist spaces and treating her with kid gloves, probably due to her 1.3 million subscribers who they naively think can be brought over to the left with her rather than just abandoning ship when she no longer agrees with them, as happened with Kraut and T not too long ago. For example, Vosh, ever a controversial figure on Redtube and part of what has recently been dubbed the dirtbag left, has had her on stream multiple times for a nice chill chat and hangout without really bothering to call her out in his trademark aggressive style, or even really at all. And he's not the only one. There has been a slowly growing refrain amongst some on the left that June is left wing now, and maybe she did do some shitty things in the past, but that's all behind her, and we should move on and forgive her for her mistakes. Don't you believe in forgiveness and people being able to change and grow, you fucking woke scold? Well, for me, the answer is yes, I do, but I don't think that June has shown anywhere near the level of humility, regret, or willingness to change that might convince me that she deserves it. Your mileage may vary, though. Hey, that's what the video is about. <laughs> June has done a lot of pretty bad shit in the not too distant past, and of course, before we can really discuss whether or not she can or should be forgiven, we first have to establish what is it she can or should be forgiven for. I'll mostly be restricting this to videos still upon her channel and a couple of her tweets, though not many tweets from pre-2016 as per this clarification, because in her own words, she disavows everything except the video she unlisted as well as a lot of her old tweets, which means that her more recent tweets, say from 2017 onwards, and of course a lot of the videos she's left up, are fair game, though I will be bringing up, but not really talking too much about, a couple of her more egregious mistakes from this time, as and when they become relevant. However, it would be remiss of me to try to pretend that she's not continued to be pretty fucking awful, because in my opinion, she absolutely has, and she definitely hasn't done enough to make amends for her actions. In this section, we'll mostly be talking about the stuff June has done pre-2019, because that's around the time people started to make this she's left-wing argument, and when she appeared on Vosh's stream for the first time, which I think was the first time much of the left was really exposed to this idea of her as a legit leftist, as opposed to Claudia Brown's problematic friend, around which we could discuss whether or not online leftist personalities could or should publicly be friends with problematic people. More on this later. This section will, to a great extent, be using her Rational Wiki page, because let's be honest here, that's what Rational Wiki does. It compiles a person's most controversial actions into a handy list, with sources of course, and June does actually say that she likes her Rational Wiki page now, after it was edited as per corrections she provided, so it's as good a place as any to begin. <laughs> June is an anti-feminist. Her first ever video, ignoring the boxer conspiracy theory for a moment, was an ignorant, half-formed straw man of what she thought feminists were like, based on feminist gets triggered YouTube compilations apparently, which basically boiled down to whiny people desperate to claim victim status all the time, and confuses the feminist idea that women shouldn't have to conform to societal norms in order to be treated with decency and respect, with the anti-feminist twisting of these words to imply that this somehow means that anyone who does conform to societal norms is a traitor to feminism or something. <laughs> There, pretty lady, do you wear heels? Do you wear makeup? Do you want to go on a diet and get thin? Don't do any of those things. Hey, I'm a feminist. That's right, a feminist in 2014 America. What does that mean? That means I want you to stoop down to my level. And that means don't go on a diet, don't wear heels, don't do makeup, don't do your hair, don't try to look pretty. I get cackles all the time and I hate it. I just love vlogging about it though and I love blogging about it on my Tumblr. You don't have to look nice for boys. No, that's the patriarchy telling you to do that. You can be a fat, lazy slob and do anything you want and then you have to force people to accept you because that is how this works. She self-identifies as an anti-feminist, by the way, as this tweet, which has not been deleted, unlike many other incriminating posts, testifies. Most of June's videos, from 2014 onwards, have basically been around this theme, of mocking what she reckons feminism is by caricaturing it, strawmanning feminist arguments, and rarely, if ever, actually engaging with real feminist talking points or debating with feminists on a level playing field. She's made videos mocking the idea of body positivity, and called over white women who want to change society's view of what a woman should look like, fat and ugly people who want every 
everyone to find them attractive overnight, rather than just people challenging societal norms forced on women, so much that a lot of them suffer from eating disorders in a desperate attempt to conform to these expectations. For example, Marilyn Monroe was a size 87. She was fat and ugly just like me, and she was known as a sex symbol. Bones are for dogs, meat is for men. If you don't find me attractive, that's fat shaming and ugly shaming. If you don't find me attractive, that's sexist. She loved to characterise feminists as people looking to gain oppression points, and rather than just being people protesting the various intersecting systems that keep people down and, well, oppress them, they in fact only want the social capital of being able to say, actually, I'm more oppressed than you. Feminism in 2014 America is completely, completely pointless. It's just a label that people are putting on themselves to feel special because, you know, it's the special snowflake oppression Olympics. Everyone is in this big race to be the most progressive and the most open-minded and the most oppressed. It is the strangest thing I have ever seen and it's just... It's like infesting like the internet and it's starting to seep out into the real world and like I really, I, I really don't like it. This was a common meme around 2012 to 2016, in fact I remember being a bit of an edgy boy myself around then and falling into the anti-feminism trap myself in university. The difference is that I grew out of it and when Gamergate came around I realised how toxic it was and jumped ship. And I certainly didn't stoke the flames of hatred, using them to further my career and contribute towards the harassment and abuse people like Anita Sarkeesian, Milo Stewart and Zoe Quinn received. You know, unlike some people who appeared on live streams with Sargon of Akkad to discuss them at length. There's a ton of this, from the video she did where she basically goes over a BuzzFeed quiz and uses it as an excuse to generalise and strawman feminists. I can define intersectional feminism. I think so. Isn't it like, feminism is for everybody. Brown people, black people, normal people. I believe that women who possess certain types of privilege are responsible for advocating for women who don't have their level of privilege. No! I know what a bad feminist is. Yeah. All of them. This quiz implies some shitty and or dumb things, therefore all feminists are terrible and or stupid, to the video she made about people being feminists because they receive unsolicited and often creepy comments about their appearance being sensitive because they should just accept compliments. I get called sweetie. I get winked at at work. Um, not in like a really obvious way, but just sometimes people walking by, like instead of just saying hello, it'll be like a little wink. Lord Jesus up in heaven, help me right now for I officially cannot handle other opinions on the internet. <laughs> Sweetie is a nice nickname that strangers give other strangers. It's like, dear, miss, hun. You'd have a point if they were like, hey, fat butt McGee. Hey, sugar tits. Hey, candy ass. But sweetie, that's not misogynistic. And you know, I actually find it ironic that you're making this out to be like, oh, when men call women sweetie. I get called sweetie. So I think that has a lot to do with the fact that I'm a girl. Yes, it probably does actually, considering people are usually nicer to girls, especially men. To Who Stole Feminism, a video in which she finds a book with the notes the previous user obviously left in there from taking a class on it or something, and proceeds to just repeat them in a funny voice, because how ridiculous that anyone might make notes in or disagree with a book they're studying for class. There's a whole bunch of notes in it. Like, and when I first saw these notes, I just figured, you know, school. They they wrote some notes for school. Like, see, all over the book, it's a whole bunch of notes. So I didn't think much of it, but then, then I looked closer, and I realized that this person is correcting the book. See here, they they crossed out women and put femaleness. And crossed out men and put maleness. It's some like politically correct thing. It's not about legal freedom. It takes so much more than that. Within a system, I think you misunderstood the meaning of target population. This is still going on, of course. People say, oh, but June's changed. She put all that behind her. That was years ago. But the video she's set to autoplay on the homepage of her channel is this one from 2018, called 100 Ways to Respect Women, in which she basically just goes through some article she was sent and makes shitty comments the whole way through. Before explaining something to a woman, ask yourself if she might already understand. She may know more about it than you do. Ah yes! How to avoid mansplaining. Oh! I should have made this a drinking game. Why didn't I make this a drinking game? Remember that fat women exist. Well, it's not hard to miss them. I'm sorry, that was... That was easy. Treat them with respect. Agreed! Respect a thick bitch. In fact, just never comment on a woman's body. Hey babe, do I look good in this dress? You better not say nothing. You better stay fucking silent. Trying to describe a woman positively? Say she is talented, clever, or funny. Not 
gorgeous, sweet, or cute. Okay. Okay. But what if, what if she's not clever? Are you gonna fucking lie to the woman? Are you telling us to lie to women? Vice? Happily demonstrating that she doesn't give a fuck about bothering to understand feminist issues, and it's the same shit we've just gone over, but I feel I should remind you that not only are all these videos still upon her channel, which judging by her own words on the matter, can only mean that she stands by them, but this is the video she's chosen to feature on the home screen when people decide to click on her channel, where most people might put a channel trailer, this she feels is the video that most accurately represents her work. And of course she's continued to pump out anti-SJW stuff like this one from just a couple of months ago, where she decides to go off on this one woman with an arguably pretty dumb but ultimately harmless take on the phrase hey guys, another way she rips into a turf who doesn't want a baby boy, and one that was only uploaded two months ago as of writing which makes the claim that those pesky SJWs are trying to censor anime boobs on Twitter. These Tumblr refugees that swarm artists on Twitter who have the audacity to draw female characters with exaggerated feminine features. So today we are going to take a look at their big brained critique of this art. So the first drawing is this one. Some superhero in a skin tight purple cat suit. But let's see what the Twitter mob had to say. Have you ever seen a woman in real life before? Gross. Have you ever seen a woman? Has you ever seen a woman in real life? Y'all ever see a female before? Have you ever seen a woman before? Have you ever seen a clock before? Have you ever seen the sky before? Not everything has to be realistic. Where are her organs? Her organs would not physically be able to fit in her body. Do you know what organs are? If so, then where are they? Is she okay? She breathing? She digesting her food? The pattern is clear. Exclusively cover individual or toxic feminists with bad takes, straw man feminist arguments, and never platform or show support for any actual feminist arguments. So she can say shit like, I'm a liberal, but I just want my side to do better. Problem is that if you exclusively attack the left and feminists in general, and associate heavily with right wing over left wing figures, people are going to judge you based on that rather than what you think is true in your heart or whatever. Also is clear what kind of audience she's cultivated as a result. Video is not about attacking what she reckons feminism is, get around half the views as the ones that do, so there is a clear financial incentive here for June to continue her toxic behaviour rather than even try to do better. <laughs> This section will be rather brief, because whilst June probably isn't anti-feminist, or at the very least is acting like one to continue the grift, I don't think she's necessarily a massive racist. However, it would be remiss of me not to point out that she has said and done some tremendously racist things for someone who's not a racist. First off, let's not forget the time that she called a black woman a gorilla for the crime of appearing in Ghostbusters 2016, complaining about the harassment directed towards her by Milo Yiannopoulos, and for not living up to her personal standards of attractiveness, because we mustn't forget that June is the ultimate arbiter of female beauty, and if you don't measure up in June's view, you deserve harassment and to be called an ugly bitch a hundred times a day on Twitter. Because of this, Milo Yiannopoulos actually got permanently banned from Twitter. The excuse they were using is that he was exacerbating the, an already out of control situation. Yeah, you can't control your followers. And his tweets weren't hateful at all, really. They were just... Oh, he did imply that she was a man, but... She looks like a man. She looks... That's She's not racist. Ugly. She's just ugly. She's yeah, it's ugly. not racist. First of all, she looks like... <laughs> To be fair, she did unlist that video and apologise multiple times, though when she did so on Vorsh's stream, she brushed it off as I made a mistake and I didn't know it was racist, and failed to acknowledge the damage and or harm it caused, so I'm not totally sure I believe her there. A pathetic attempt to like white knight for this was like, but she does, it's not racist to say that. And like, in my mind, like I genuinely didn't think it was racist at the time. Like I don't know why now looking back at it, but genuinely I was just like, it's not racist to say people look like certain animals, like blah blah blah. But looking now it's like really cringy because like <laughs> I had no idea it was such a like overtly racist thing to say. She did also call Black Lives Matter, a protest movement that sprang up in the wake of a massive wave of police brutality against black people, black supremacy trash because she was a gamergator and anti-SJW in 2016, so of course she didn't like the movement that made her, a privileged white woman, confront the reality of modern policing in the US. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Before we really get into this section, I just want to point out Shu does not understand centrism. This isn't really about her personal politics, it's actually about her boyfriends because she's happy to defend extremely far-right commentators and centrism, but not the left, or at least not as strongly. I just wanted to lead with this because I think it sets the tone for her understanding of politics, which she claims has improved even though this video was uploaded less than eight months ago. Anyway, this is how she defines it. I just saw this cursed tweet. Dear centrists, what is the center between wanting a white ethnostate and not wanting that? Asking for a friend. A centrist is not somebody who is in the center of every single issue. Centrist is not the same as being neutral all the time. A centrist is somebody who falls around the center of the political compass. A centrist is somebody who sometimes agrees with the right and sometimes agrees with the left, depending on the issue. Yet there's all these god-awful fakes about centrists being like, like, like this meme. What the fuck is that? They have opinions and stances. They are literally not, well, I agree with both on every single issue. Ask a centrist what their position on abortion is. They will either say they are pro-life or they are pro-choice. Y'all motherfucking dumbasses out here dead ass believe a centrist would be like, abort only half the baby. <laughs> That is baby's first understanding of what centrism is. The obvious problem with this is quite simply that she misses the point of these criticisms of centrist ideology. No one actually believes that centrism means in the middle of every issue, but it's an incoherent, cowardly position to take because it implies that the centrist doesn't believe in basically anything. Everyone believes in voting for policies, not people, or at least so they like to think. But the fact of the matter is that at least when we on the left oppose something, we can explain why using our ideology and a belief in equality and justice. Even right-wingers can do this. Their ideology is fucked up and, in my opinion, wrong, but at least it's justifiable and consistent. However, Armored Skeptic, being a centrist, believes in just picking and choosing what sounds nice, with no real ideological consistency. Using the abortion example June brought up, for instance, a leftist can say that they believe in the freedom, liberation, and autonomy of people to choose what happens with their bodies, whether that be the choice of whether or not to carry a baby to term, or not to be exploited by a capitalist who would seek to use their body as a tool to build profit, which is all work is under capitalism. Or alternatively, we could argue that Actually, what's important is the health and well-being of people, and since abortion being illegal only leads to deaths and injuries owing to illegal backroom abortions, or pregnancies that would lead to both mother and child having to be carried out to term, it's kinder, and in line with our ideology, to keep them legal. Likewise, because this is a major concern for us, we believe in nationalised free healthcare, including performing gender affirmation surgery free of charge. A right-winger, on the other hand, opposes abortion rights because they believe in an ideology that prioritises personal responsibility above all else, and a fetus shouldn't be punished for their parents' poor choices. Like Likewise, they also oppose welfare programs and schemes to help those in need because in their view, these people should have taken personal responsibility, not relied on the government to cater for their needs. It's fucked up, but it is consistent to a point. Can centrists do the same rationalisation with their ideology, without admitting to actually being either left or right? Also, let's be honest here, the point of these memes is to make the point that centrists, being in the middle of the political compass, do favour a middle ground solution, and this meme, for example, is more of a critique of the people who will say that both Antifa and neo-Nazis are terrorists, or just as bad or whatever. Here, for example, is a compilation of 10 random ones that I found on Twitter by searching Antifa both sides. I think that white supremacists are bad people. I'm not going to argue that. I'm not going to justify anything that they've done up to this point, but they don't tend to cause violence in the US and Canada the way that Antifa seems to cause violence on a regular basis. <laughs> When in reality the fascists want non-white people wiped from the face of the earth, and Antifa oppose them on that, and so the centrists decrying any and all violence are only supporting the far right, because they're basically doing 
this shit. Similarly, if the government is condoning the far right murdering protesters with their cars and the left wing opposition is opposing this with violent means, then as we've seen, the centrist position has historically been to either condemn the left for stooping to the same level as those opposing them or claim that both sides are equally bad and should compromise, which, yeah, both the tweet and the meme support this hypothesis. And do I really need to go into all the times throughout history the centrists have sided with the far right in times of trouble because, above all, what they desire is a continuation of the status quo and the right are more readily available to offer it than the left. The right will preserve capitalism, preserve injustice, and preserve many of the intersecting systems of oppression currently being maintained by neoliberal capitalism. And if you're a privileged rich white guy like Armand Skeptic, well, you're less likely to be affected by a right-wing government than a left-wing one, right? That explains why he spent so much of the last decade pretty much exclusively attacking the left and very occasionally trying for a bit of balance by attacking a right-winger on an issue like the environment or religion and not their underlying ideology, other than the fact that anti-SJW videos were huge back then, and he actually admitted this on Twitter. Anyway, that aside, let's talk about June's personal politics. June describes herself as a sock dem, though she has attributed the term liberal to herself in the past as well. Before we really get into her various fuck-ups when it comes to, for example, Donald Trump, I just want to laser focus on this one very short clip from an actually very recent October 2019 video outlining her personal political views. I have been a Bernie supporter since 2015, and I still support him now along with Tulsi Gabbard. I consider myself a social democrat, not a democratic socialist. Those are two different things. A democratic socialist is basically a socialist. A social democrat is basically a capitalist. There's so much wrong here that it's hilarious. First, of course, there's the rather damning description of herself as a capitalist, which is a little yikesy in and of itself, and I'm honestly not sure that someone as influential in online politics as June could actually genuinely believe that being a supporter of capitalism and being a capitalist are the same thing, because honestly, she doesn't come across as so uninformed that she could easily make such a mistake like that. So, is she just openly admitting that she holds the positions that she does because she's rich? Also, being a democratic socialist is just being a socialist, it's just an unambiguously bad take. I'm not really going to have a go at June for supporting an economic system that kills hundreds of millions every year, keeps children in abject poverty, and starves millions of African peasants, among others, to death, simply because billionaires refuse to give up their wealth for the greater good. Don't get me wrong, social democracy is a step in the right direction, but unlike socialism, it won't end that problem, it'll just improve it very slightly. A Bernie Sanders presidency will not end poverty or world hunger, but a global socialist movement absolutely would, because she is a liberal, and so she's predisposed towards not really giving a shit about helping those in the most vulnerable positions positions in society. However, what I will ask is this. Does she believe that there can be such a thing as a fair society under a system controlled by billionaires? Because make no mistake, these people control every aspect of society and the existence of capitalism necessarily means that a select few people can control the economy through ownership of capital and control of the means of production. That's like the whole point of capitalism. The worst part though, at least to me, is the Tulsi Gabbard thing, who she has in the past described as literally Bernie Light and attributes all Gabbard's previously bad actions to the influence of her religious family. Suffice to say that this is not the case. Gabbard is incredibly pro-war, pro-American interventionism in the Middle East, pro-dictators like Assad in Syria, Egypt's El Sisi, and of course Modi in India, as well as the Israeli treatment of the Palestinian people. She's anti-refugee and refuses to condemn the use of torture on terror suspects. She's had some extremely spicy he takes like referring to gay activists as homosexual extremists, and up until a couple of years ago was rather conservative on most social issues, right up until a short while before she was considering a presidential run, which June attributes to living with a religious family. Uh, and what is so frustrating now, as we look at the situation there, uh, our administration refuses to recognize who our enemy is, and unless and until that happens, then it's impossible to come up with a strategy to defeat that enemy. We have to recognize that this is about radical Islam. This is a, as much a military war as it is an ideological war. And we've got to understand what that ideology is and challenge it, understand it so that we can defeat it uh, and protect our citizens, protect the American people. That's something that has to be done uh, in order for us to look at places like Iraq, places like Syria and places really in, in different parts of the world, North Africa and Nigeria. This is not just about one group called ISIS or another group called Al-Qaeda. This is about an overall threat posed by this radical Islamic extremist agenda um, that exists all around the world, as we're seeing, unfortunately, most recently in uh, Paris uh, and in Europe. So very quickly, Congresswoman, you're upset you didn't hear those words from the president today. Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm upset that the president and the White House, whether it's today or yesterday or tomorrow, is not actually saying this is a war 
uh, that the Islamic extremists are posing uh, against the United States and against the West, and we recognize who our enemy is and come up with a strategy to defeat that enemy. It's going to be slightly different in different places, It'd be different in Iraq and different in, in Nigeria. But unless and until you recognize who our enemy is and understand them, then we won't be effective in defeating that threat. And we're going to continue to see the kinds of tragic incidences that we've seen uh, most recently in Paris. Obviously, I'm extremely briefly summarising here, but Renegade Cuts has an excellent full breakdown of the issues many on the left have with Gabbard, which I would recommend you watch. It's like 20 minutes long. Or alternatively, just look up her voting record, as June recommends, and you'll see that Gabbard also refused to support the impeachment proceedings against Donald Trump. Speaking of Donald Trump... <laughs> June does not like Donald Trump. That much is clear, and I'm not going to act like she's a Republican or right-winger. She's never made a pro-Trump video or tweet, although this is actually arguable. I'll come into that in the next section. However, she has made several videos and tweets downplaying the very real spate of hate crimes inspired and emboldened by Donald Trump's candidacy and election victory, by, of course, making a video covering a couple of made-up hate crimes, potentially in order to imply that they're all like that and Trump isn't really inspiring hate crimes. Now, some of these stories could be true. Of course racist people exist. I'm not denying that at all. But the fact that they're all so similar, all using the same words, all set up exactly the same. It's just, it just screams like victim fan fiction. I was just walking back home when this white man in a MAGA hat raped me. Day one in Trump's America. So three of these stories in particular went viral and many different news sources picked them up. One of them was about a girl who had her hijab removed and when she was questioned by the police, she admitted that she made the story up. The other was about a Muslim who had a knife pulled on them on the bus, but the police never heard about this incident. When you report a fake crime, it's illegal. That's why like none of these people ever report these things to the police. But when they do report their fake stories, this happens. But the creme de la creme, ugh, just mwah, just beautiful. So this gay dude apparently had a bottle thrown at him by a Trump supporter who shouted a bunch of homophobic slurs at him. That's a very clean Apple Watch. You, would, you wouldn't want to stain that nice white Apple Watch, would you? Then Vice picked it up, and it turned out the kid never had homophobic slurs shouted at him, didn't remember which bar he was at, the police and hospitals had no record of this, and the kid is a special effects artist who works in horror movies. <sighs> Embarrassing. These people do this because they have victim complexes, and when things are going too smoothly for them, they have to make shit up. And I find it kind of funny, I find it kind of sad, the dreams are- I find it funny that in the current year, when everyone and their mother has a cell phone that can record video, none of these incidences are recorded. But you know what there are recordings of? Trump supporters getting beat the fuck up. Before the results came in on election night, Jade had posted on Instagram that she hoped Trump would win. Even though at the time of the video's release, the information showing the rise in hate crimes was readily available. She then followed it up with this tweet, further implying that all these supposed hate crimes were made up, thus further compounding this idea that these silly SJWs were all lying when they said that the guy who regularly demonizes minorities had inspired hate crimes. She did also downplay the likelihood of Trump rolling back LGBTQ plus rights in this video, one of the few she's deleted that I'm going to cover, because I think it's particularly egregious. Hey you fucking homos, I love you, and I care about you. Not all of you, because I don't know you personally, so don't get too comfortable, but I support you. And although it's funny to see everyone literally shaking, but uh, I knew that Mama June was going to come out eventually and because uh, she's concerned and then she's going to just mom all over the internet. I've been seeing a lot of videos from gay people and LGBT people and people freaking out on Twitter, scared for their life, scared their rights are going to be taken away. And it's like, I just need to, to take a seat right here. Just pop a squat right quick. Don't be scared. I mean, it's okay to be scared. I'm scared, everyone's scared, we don't know what the future holds. But don't make any permanent decisions based on temporary feelings and fear of the unknown. I know that you're stressed and you're scared, but I just have to tell you that the media and your friends might be hyping you up for something that doesn't even exist. The next president does not hate 
LGBT people. I will do everything in my power to protect our LGBTQ citizens from the violence and oppression of a hateful foreign ideology. Believe me. And I have to say, as a Republican, it is so nice to hear you cheering for what I just said. Thank you. See? He's even proud of the change of heart Republicans have nowadays for the LGBT. And so is this guy. Of course, every American has a unique identity. I am proud to be gay. I am proud to be a Republican. But most of all, I am proud to be an American. She has since apologised for this, by the way, saying that it was naive and taking full responsibility for her mistake. So, whilst I'm not going to hold it against her, it was extremely harmful and I'm not going to act like it didn't happen. Trump seemed to bring the worst out in June, since she said some pretty horrendous stuff about Muslims at the time, defended his grabber by the pussy comments, and various other, let's be honest here, stupid, offensive things. But, as I said, she has apologised and I'll leave it up to you whether or not you accept that apology. <laughs> This is the big one for me. Sean Head, the woman who many on the left are trying to convince us is actually a comrade, and whom we should forgive and accept with open arms, was, until extremely recently, close friends with, and has on multiple occasions gone out of her way to defend, Lauren Southern, famed white nationalist vlogger who attempted to drown refugees trying to enter Europe, spread conspiracy theories about how the dirty black and brown people are taking over, and causing a white genocide by having interracial babies and or just having higher birth rates in general, which of course is not actually the case, as Sean pointed out in his response to her, made a video in which she implied that Paris was un-French due to the existence of non-white people in a specific neighbourhood, produced multiple misleading documentaries based on lies and doctored footage, and basically built her entire career around fear-mongering about the scary immigrants, people of colour and refugees, and of course, viciously attacking feminists, because back in 2015, that was the first rung on the alt-right pipeline. Start off having a go at feminism, potentially wind up crying over the Jewish conspiracy to control the world by putting a gay couple in an advert for oven chips. Southern got worse, and June refused to distance herself for way too long. In order to help elect Donald Trump, the though it is arguable on whether or not June was aware that this was the intention, June and Lauren collaborated in a two-minute parody ad attacking Hillary Clinton at the height of the 2016 election campaign on Southern's channel. June was the one in the thumbnail, and it's clear that Southern was using her star power to help boost the video and Lauren's channel beyond what it had previously been. Their friendship lasted several years, meaning that there are now multiple retrospectively embarrassing pictures of apparently left-leaning liberal Shu being all snugly and close with white nationalist Lauren Southern, and June has mostly seemed rather reticent to even and criticise her erstwhile friend, going so far as to say on one occasion, I never considered a difference of opinion in politics, in religion, in philosophy, as cause for withdrawing from a friend, in a selfie caption which I think shows her extreme naivety and, of course, privilege. As I just mentioned, as a wealthy white person, there's basically no fucking chance that she'll ever feel the sharp end of the kinds of policies white nationalists support. She also, amusingly enough, once tried denying that Southern was alt-right, when in actuality she had already accepted and publicly embraced that label for herself. During 2018, June did her best to publicly distance herself from Southern, though of course completely undermined this approach when she posted this tweet, basically stating that it's okay to be friends with a white nationalist, lending them your platform when they want to help elect a far-right borderline fascist demagogue, helping to boost them, publicly endorse them and so on. In fact, if anyone dares to criticise you for doing so, the best approach is just to tell that person to fuck off and claim that this is simply guilt by association, even though this association was helping a white nationalist spread their message. Look, I don't say this very often and I'll probably not say it again for quite a while, but Dusty Smith had a point. Specifically, when he said that this is not guilt by association, this is guilt by action. When you literally go on their channel and use their fame to help make them more famous, you help amplify their message. June claims to have finally cut the friendship off several years too late, but I guess we'll never really know if this was her just sad posting again, rather than telling her critics to fuck off for daring to criticise her for having fascist friends. Then things died down for a while. The June question kept being brought up, but mostly it was accepted that she was just one of those right-wingers who like to say that they're liberals or lefties in order to give their platform more of an air of legitimacy in the same 
Ryan Vayner's temple, Dave Rubin or Sargon, even though everyone knows that this is just a flagrant lie, but some resisted this characterization, notably Claudia Brown among others. It was never really taken seriously, especially when, when Lauren Southern announced that she'd quit YouTube to go be a trad wife, and definitely not because of a massive leak of documents showing her to be a hypocrite and lie for her entire career, June said this, and I think it's fucking awful to be honest. Here June says that Southern will be a great mother one day. She is a white nationalist. She believes that white people are being bred out of existence and that as a result something must be done to protect the white race. She believes that women shouldn't work, they should remain virginal until marriage, even though she didn't, and should be utterly subservient to their husbands. She tried to drown desperate refugees and has multiple ties to neo-Nazis and white supremacist groups. The only way one could possibly say that they think someone like that would make a good mother is if they believed that raising a child in a white nationalist household to be indoctrinated and taught to hate, the violence against non-white people is okay because it's self-defense and that women should not be trusted or respected is okay. I don't, in fact I would argue that such a situation is borderline child abuse, but June thinks it's fine and hey she's not gonna see Lauren again, so better part on good terms, eh? The seeds of this movement were there from the beginning. Claudia Brown has been a huge June cheerleader for a while, and June did claim to, and to an extent actually does, hold some genuinely lefty positions. Maybe more liberal than left, but certainly something. She wasn't exactly Sargon, is what I'm saying, though she did collaborate with him on multiple occasions during Gaming Gate. As mentioned though, this wasn't really taken all that seriously, right up until her chat with Vosh, but ultimately, I'm afraid that I remain unconvinced. Not that I'm implying that June, or any reactionary really, cannot be forgiven, or are incapable of being brought over to the left, not by a long shot. After all, I've said this multiple times, but I used to be a bit chuddy, a bit of an anti-SJW when I was 19, and I changed my positions completely on all the stuff I used to believe. The difference, though, is scale. When I was a bit of a bellend, I didn't really hurt anyone other than making the occasional shitty comment in public or online, and I certainly didn't cause massive shifting of the Overton window allowing for a Trump presidency. The skeptics, though, and Shu is the most popular among them, again, she's the only one with over a million subscribers, they definitely have. They've changed the tactics from talking about issues to triggering the SJWs, from actually engaging with policies to owning the libs, which was there a little bit previously, but they massively popularised it. And crucially, they brought right-wing reactionary ideals to younger people, made them seem cool, made the left seem simultaneously ridiculous and terrifying, whereas the right were the sensible ones, of course. Look how dapper they all are, with their Vansonas wearing suits and top hats. There are hundreds of thousands of people who found June's videos when they were teenagers, internalised a lot of what she was saying, and voted for Donald Trump in 2016, or Boris Johnson in 2019. After this most recent UK election, I'm genuinely shocked by the amount of times I've seen people say shit like, I voted Tory to trigger those snowflake Labour voters, or had arguments with people online who thought it was hilarious that I cared for the lives of vulnerable and disabled people killed by the Conservative government's policies, or actively wanted to break off friendships with people who wanted people like me to die slowly as our support all gets cut and we're demonised and called scroungers for not working when we physically can't. Not least because it was extremely reminiscent of the kind of rhetoric that these people used. This culture of nihilism and malice wasn't created by June, nor was it really caused by her, but she exacerbated it, she benefited from it, and arguably encouraged it. But of course, the question remains. I've not personally been hurt by June. I've not personally suffered as a result of the direct harassment she engaged in. I've not been covered by her in one of her cheap shot strawmanning videos in which I stand in for the entirety of feminism, but I've seen the damage wrought by her actions. I can't say what it would take for those she is directly hurt to ever forgive her, if they even could, but here's my take. So far in this video we've gone over Shu's past behaviour, and I think just about everyone on the left can tell that maybe this isn't the sort of person who can or should be readily forgiven her past behaviour, invited into leftist spaces, treated with kid gloves, and for us to ignore or skip over her past actions as many leftists have been recently. Look, I'm not gatekeeping here. June has claimed to be left-wing for years, but the fact is that I've seen basically no evidence of change, and she's caused a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, and potentially a lot of real-world ideological change that may have repercussions for years, if not decades to come. What can such a person do to make amends? Should we forgive her past mistakes because those 1.3 million subscribers would be a great asset if she actually started to make genuinely lefty content? Personally, I would say not. She can be left now all she wants, but we don't have to support her or be her best mate all of a sudden. Whether or not you can ever forgive her is up to you. Personally, I'd find it rather difficult after all the shit she's done, but I suppose I could outline a way in which I think it's possible. But first we have to discuss whether or not she actually has changed, or if that's just another lie. <laughs> I 
I don't think she has, to be perfectly honest. She's not stopped pumping out the anti-feminist content, though of course she does now add a caveat that this is because we feminists shouldn't post cringe, expecting anyone to believe it when it's basically identical to all her past content which existed pretty much exclusively to strawman and or demonise the left and left-wing feminism in specific. Continues to backtrack on apologies she's made, hasn't really made any effort to distance herself from the extreme far-right element she's been linked with, and remember that a lot of the stuff we've talked about here happened within the past year. The calling a white nationalist a great mother thing was mid-2019, as was several of her anti-feminist videos for example, and crucially, she's not deleted most of her old content. She can say she regrets her past, but she's still making money from it. She's still got those videos available to view, raking in viewers and patrons, and as a quick and easy step on the PewDiePie pipeline. People can and still will be radicalised and turn further right because of her old content still being there. Sure, she can delete some old tweets, but that doesn't really mean anything. She hasn't deleted some of the more egregious ones, and it wouldn't even really be all that hard for her to do so. In order to find most of the links for this video, I just googled shoe on head controversy and boom. Top link is her Rational Wiki page. You don't have to like Rational Wiki to know that their sources section on her basically compiles all the old videos and tweets she should maybe look into deleting if she actually gives a shit about changing, making amends, or indeed vaguely regrets half the shit she's done to hurt people in the past. <laughs> As I said, this is a personal thing and will of course vary from person to person, but for me, I think it's simple. 1. Make a video apology. Actually list all the shitty things she did, all the people and groups she hurt, and sincerely actually admit the harm she demonstrably caused. Don't say shit like, I said some bad things in 2017, but I'm better now, teehee. That doesn't mean shit. We want specifics and we want to know that she realises the harm she caused. 2. Immediately stop making videos demonising and or strawmanning feminists, or at the very least, make it balanced. She's made a few videos attacking misogynists, but nowhere near as many, so if she doesn't want to come across as an anti-feminist, she should probably stop making content exclusively ragging on individual feminists while ignoring the wider movement or ideology. Maybe actually make a couple defending feminism, or talking about what feminism actually is, rather than providing an exaggerated straw man. Take Vosch as an example, since we've just brought him up. He'll often call out lefties, but from a left-wing perspective, and nowhere near as much as he calls out right-wingers. Vosch isn't perfect, but he understands that if all you do as a leftist is hate on other leftists, you're only hurting your own side. 3. Delete, or at least unlist, all the videos and tweets that caused harm to other people. This is harsh, I know, and it is up for interpretation, but if she really wants to demonstrate that she's sorry, that she's changed, that she wants to make amends and so on, she can't leave them up, especially if she's unlisted a ton of the more controversial ones, most of which I didn't even talk about today, which implies that she doesn't stand by those, but like, does stand by the ones she left up, some of which are extremely bad. Plus, she actually tweeted that this is the case. So love me, love me, love me. I'm a liberal. June, Sean Head, whatever, probably is left-leaning. I'm sure she does vote for left-wing policies and her admiration for Bernie does seem pretty legit. The problem is that her online activity actively contradicts this. She's been incredibly reactionary in the past, said some dumb shit about the two genders thing, and of course everything I just mentioned here. She's done some really, really bad stuff in the past. Not like Nazi shit or anything, but bad all the same. And to my knowledge, she has yet to really properly apologise for any of it. Don't get me wrong, I know she regrets some of it. She made that perfectly clear by denouncing a lot of her past behaviour as cringe, or with the occasional dismissive tweet, but she hasn't really sincerely apologised. She has, to my knowledge, made no genuine video or long-form post about her past actions, and has never made amends. Likewise, her content continues to be reactionary, continues to bash feminists with no counterpoint, whilst under the veneer of, oh, but it's okay, I'm a feminist, whilst not actually really giving comparable treatment to the other side, or talking in any depth about what feminism even really is. She's happy to have a go at TERFs, another sect of people calling themselves feminists, who, to be fair, are utter fucking scum, pop feminism and so on, but never really goes into detail or discuss the specifics of the ideology. She's not deleted several of her older videos, many of which have pushed younger people onto the alt-right pipeline, while she has unlisted a few, implying that the remaining ones are those that she stands by. Shu has no right to forgiveness, nor does she have a right to be considered a part of the left, but if she wants to be, she should probably start by making amends for the pain she caused. She has so far failed to do so, in my opinion, and therefore I do not accept her as a comrade. Shu can say that she's a leftist if she really wants to, but over the years she has posted a lot of reactionary content associated with some pretty extreme far right wing figures and done basically everything right wingers do, all the while calling herself a liberal. If she wants people to start accepting her as anything other than a lying reactionary anti feminist right winger, she needs to actively stand up and stop doing the shit that got her that reputation in the first place, even if it causes her demonstrable financial difficulty, and make amends. Otherwise, we're going to justifiably keep calling her a reactionary anti feminist whose greatest legacy is helping shift the overture window far enough to the right to cause severe material harm. If she wanted to, 
she would actually do something about her reputation among the left rather than just whining to Vosh, but if she's unwilling to do so then sorry, but she has no right to complain about it. And don't get me wrong, I'm well aware that people are going to compare Shu's apparent redemption arc to Joe Rogan's recent endorsement of Bernie Sanders and I definitely see why, but here's the difference. I will fully accept any help either Rogan or June or the New York Times or the BBC or whatever offers up in support of a leftist candidate and both Rogan and June have massive fan bases which would make amazing allies and potentially a massive boost in Bernie voters even if the figures themselves are reactionary garbage. The difference is that Rogan isn't acting like he's changed, he's not pretending to be something or someone and he's not and he's definitely not asking for forgiveness from and acceptance into the left, but if he was I would request of him a very similar course of action to the one I've laid out here. And finally because after my EFAP video I recognise that there's now a non-zero chance that a lot of Sean Head fans are now watching this video in order to downvote it and call me a cuck, I just want to say hi and also if you're the Sean Head fan who wrote this article please seek professional help. Is it water with the sheep in the in the box? Hello all, another controversial one I'm afraid to say but frankly I just had too many people on the left claim that this woman was one of us that I had to respond because honestly what utter shite. I believe it when I see it. Anyway, I hope you're all having a lovely February, I can't tell you what a relief it is for January, objectively the worst month to put my Mauler hat on for a moment, to be over and we can finally get on with the rest of the year which is also miserable but at least it's been a payday since Christmas for most of us, at least those of us in work which I'm currently not. Now I'm sure you know why we're here, but in case you're unaware, the names currently on screen are all the people who give me money on Patreon each month, to whom I am eternally grateful, and if you want to have your name appear too, feel free to head over to my Patreon and donate. Likewise, if you want me to read out your name and or Mimi username, feel free to donate more than $5 and I will do so. Allow me to demonstrate. This week I especially want to thank Emily, formerly known as Corvus. Next we have Ryan, uh, Ryan, it's Ryan, Pixels Green, Stacy Solano, Susie M, Teodor Bakalaroff, Thomas McCallum, and Tom Newport. You can also make one-off donations at Coffee, ask me questions on Curious Cat, or follow me on Twitter if you like. To be honest, I don't think I'm very good at Twitter, because a lot of other bread tubers with a lot less subscribers than me have a lot more Twitter followers than me, so feel free to follow if you want, but even if you don't, I would appreciate feedback on how to be good at Twitter. <laughs> anyway, until next time, solidarity, and have a good one, I guess.